Good day everybody, Songo here with another video. This time we are taking a full and complete review of Kel'Thas after the changes on the PTR. First thing is the general. Basically, he's got very few to no immediate damage options. Let's refresh the forts. Because, well, it's taking... Three seconds for this, and one second for that. So, yeah, in general, he feel Kel'Thas feels rather unresponsive, to say the least. Thankfully, you do still have this perfect time for the phone. Thank you. You still have gravity laps, so... And you still maintain your ability to just cut off passageways with your flame strike, empowered, of course. So that's a good thing. On the more specific notes, Living Bond now automatically hops to nearby enemies or er, enemy heroes, while as soon as it explodes, you know. After three sec, oops, Tar target priority. After it explodes, after three seconds, or if the target dies. So that's good. But now you don't have chain bomb, which means you can no longer just get a wizard minion in the middle of the minion wave, and then just walk away because the entire wave's gonna die. Which is probably a good thing for the game, but it's, it is still a nerf, regardless. And then, for Gravity Lapse, the empowering it with Vernon Spheres adds a 0.5 second uh, stun to the Gravity Lapse. To the duration of that. Wow. Okay, anyway, you get to the point. Nothing else about the base abilities really changed aside from a small nerf to flame strikes base damage. So, let's discuss the talent tiers now. Talent, talent tier 1 is the only one with any defensive talents whatsoever. Any of them. You have no defensive talents anywhere else at all. Like, that's a huge nerf. So, in addition to being much more delayed and reliant on your enemies being dumb enough to stay by the this chain bomb long enough, you know, three seconds, to actually get tagged, you know, he ha he's only got one defensive option now. So, every time, take Mana Addict. Except maybe on the Battlefield of Eternity, where it's a bit too hard to get a region globe on an average map because of your fighting over the objective. In which case, maybe take Felon Fusion. It's like a hybrid between offense and defense, but as mentioned, this is your only op way to get any defensive abilities, so you want the best defense you can because it's your only place. So yeah, also 5% ability power is not incredibly significant, so yeah. Okay, anyway, so take Mana Addict, even, no matter what, basically. Yeah, okay, you get it. Level 4. <clears throat> Netherwind has been massively nerfed. They made it so... Let's re-toggle cooldowns. The speed is... This is the default speed. And now... Netherwind no longer increases that speed. So it's got a larger range, sure. But 
it's taken so long to get to the end that it's basically not worth it, in my honest opinion. <clears throat> it's so clunky to use and rather unresponsive. Energy Royal is really nice, it, especially if you can tag multiple people with it using for <coughs> using for spheres to allow it to hit up to three targets so yeah that's nice. potentially good if you even if you've hit just one guy on you then it's only a six second cooldown and you might be able to stun again at the tail end of a team fight and that could be the difference between a kill and them all just getting away. So, yeah, that's a pretty good and solid, ta solid talent. However, it does rely on you actually hitting your skill, which is no longer has the speed increase. So, yeah, it's it's nice. I'll say that, but it's not 100% reliable. Whereas Monotap just allows you to spam infinitely. You literally cannot run out of mana with Monotap. And if you are, like, collecting any region globes, because, yeah, you'll... Yeah. And to me, that seems to be getting more average damage and a reduced cooldown on Gravity Lab. Not to mention, you will just, like, not nice. run into a problem of not having mana to finish someone off. Which is really great. Now for level 7. Burned Flesh is not reliable because people are already spreading out because you're using Living Bomb and it automatically spreads to nearby heroes after three seconds, of course. So, yeah, people are just not going to be clumping up. It's not happened in eight hours of play. It just does not happen. So, I would not take Burned Flesh. Gravity Crush is numerically worse than Sunfire Enchantment, or the basic ability, because burns, uh, it in Gravity Crush increases 25% of the damage that you deal as Kel'thas to the target. So, roughly 200 damage for Empowered Flame Strike, and uh, roughly 125 damage for a full duration of Living Bomb. That's 325 damage, give or take. Doesn't compare. And now I see why they nerfed Sunfire Enchantment, despite it not being so good back when, before this change. Because even a vulnerability, of course, for yourself, isn't as good as Sunfire Enchantment, even after the nerf on the PTR. So, that's really, really surprising. A fine choice. Now, if you add the ultimates into the equation, this results in roughly 50 extra damage per hit plus the f roughly 50 damage on slide, so yeah, that would result in a little bit extra damage overall, but it's not as reliable and not as quick as just launching that out. So I'd t just take Sunfire Enchantment because it's not unreliable, like Burned Flesh and Reliant, since Burned Flesh is reliant on your enemies being stupid and clumping up. 
and gravity crush is just numerically worse unless you decide to spend an ultimate on the enemy in which case it's slightly better it shall be done <clears throat> So, take Phoenix. You could take Pyroblast, but Kael'thas is already having problems with responsiveness. So, yeah. It's... Yeah. No. I... Phoenix just feels so much better. Here, I would take Pyromaniac, because you're reducing the cooldowns of everything. I have one second for each. Uh, Alright, let's untoggle cooldowns. And basically every two se every second is counting for two. Which is really nice. And if you've got this to spread, you can basically spam th this infinitely. Because two people... This... If you got Living Bomb on two people, this would reduce the cooldown by two seconds every second, and that would be nice. Compared to an, a slow after three seconds, I think that's much more valuable. A very insignificant slow as well, just 30%. And it's not on demand like Jaina's, which is pretty instant as soon as you hit. And Fission Bomb doesn't seem to make any real difference. Be of course, I can't see what the radius of the explosion is. I think it's roughly right around this. Roughly the equivalent of a empowered flame strike. So, no, it's just near, really not all that worth it. And, <clears throat> yeah. Here on level 16, I actually would wrap this, all of these are pretty even in terms of power. Because, you know, one spheres. You get to use your stuff again, and you get that second empowered uh, flame strike or er, attack, which is nice. Not to mention you're getting even more mana, and you can get another living bomb and still use flame strike, letting you get um a pretty good. Er, er, average DPS. And yeah. That's pretty good. Meanwhile, Sunfire Sun King's Fury basically gives you a Sunfire enchantment. Except that it does not turn your auto attack into a spell, so it's still blocked by like block. But it's on all of the auto attacks you do against them in 30 sec in three seconds feels like 30 seconds but not quite <laughs> uh, yeah. theory of the sun will is basically doubling your main ability now and it's pretty much immediately after it explodes so that's pretty good I would have to admit. But, hmm. Yeah, all of these are pretty good, in my honest opinion. Here, Rebirth is going to give you the maximum amount of total DPS for your Very good. Uh, cooldown, because it's giving an additional 7 seconds of this, and you can reposition it. Which is good. Arcane power. You're really not going to be running out of mana with mana tap. 
but if you somehow manage to break the game and run out of mana, then sure, why not? It's 15% additional damage will also mean that, er, spell damage, which I think actually empowers your Sunfire Enchantment as well, is, you know what, let's test that. I've not thought of that before, so on an Attic Phoenix, doesn't matter, uh, Twin Spheres and Arcing Power. So, 434, let's just test. 434. Oh, cooldowns. And... Yeah, 499. It does work. So, yeah. That's pretty nice. But... Compared to 200% of this... And this is much safer to use... Uh, it's... A toss-up. Really. You get more immediate damage if you do this with arcane power but meh <clears throat> i would never take master flame for the same reasons that i discussed with living bomb because you c it requires the enemy to play badly and not spread out which is not something you can rely on and Presence of Mind, again, I really would never take this, even if I took Pyroblast, because it's not doing anything for your damage. And people are already running away from their team, regardless of this. I don't know why, running doesn't change the damage, and you can't hide behind forts, or anything like that, so I don't get why people think... Oh god, Pyroblast is chasing me, I have to run. Like, I don't get it, but people are doing that, so you're not really going to get people to stand in. So yeah, I'd just take Arcane Power so you'd have a better chance of one-shotting someone with Pyroblast if you take it. And that seems to be about it for my testing over the last 12 hours. I would comment on the removal of clairvoyance, which was actually pretty significant, like incredibly significant, because now there is no way to instantly proc someone out of spell, aside from, you know, your only stun and safety mechanic, gravity lapse which is now slower and yeah it was already not a very good tool for getting people out of stealth thankfully on the ptr there was no one playing stealthies because everyone was playing gaslo and Ilden and guvanas with mind control with god damn it one of the most Bullshit ability. <laughs> uh, anyway. But this is rather significant. Even if people did not often pick up clairvoyance, it I'm definitely going to be feeling the nerf once people are playing Nova on live servers. Ugh. Yeah. And not to mention you've got no Bolt of the Storm. Just so you're already fairly immobile and heavily reliant on your positioning for your defense. And so your best defensive option got nerfed quite heavily, although it was reduced to a level one talent. But it also conflicts with another level 1 defensive talent. And you don't have that get out of jail free card at level 20. Which sucks. So all in all, this is a general nerf. 
and but it at least shows a full cool direction they are taking with this. Uh, so, see you later, and have fun.